All right, this is for uh, 2D animation, CSC 186, and this is about implied motion lecture. One of the things I want you to be thinking about is, as in the world that we live in, we are bombarded with images. The images that make up billboards, sign advertisements, print ads and magazines, uh, signs in the hallways. Many of these are employing a, a, a type of implied motion where it, we get the feeling of something is in movement or giving a directionality to something or just producing a type of movement within the image itself in a single image. And so what we're talking about in this particular uh, lecture is about this idea. And um, one of the things that we want to understand, and I'm looking from the notes here, is that we live in a world of motion and change. Things are constantly moving. Uh, and we want to be able to communicate these ideas. Remember, this class is about communication, not so much about software and doing this or doing that, but creating things that communicate, communicating an idea. And we can, it, we can communicate the sense of something moving in a single image with the use of different techniques, and that's what this is about. And so even in the beginning of different, uh, from a long time ago, we've got cave drawings which can depict a scene of some sort. But these scenes, even though they're depicted on the cave walls, don't have to be stationary. They don't have to be inactive. They're actively depicting something happening. So here's a small little example of a scene. And what I always want you to do is look at the images that you have, whatever it is, and think what is the artist trying to communicate? What is every single little line and mark on the page mean? And how does it produce some sort of message or communicate some sort of idea? So if we look at this, I always like to think, okay, so what, what are these symbols? We can assume certain things, but not everyone sees the same thing. So going around and thinking about, well, what do these mean to me and why? Why do I think this is a particular object? Why do I think what this is is what it is? What is it? Well, there's no one here to tell me. The artist doesn't exist. It was 15,000 years ago. But because of its basic iconic nature, I can suggest that it is a, perhaps a spear. Maybe it's something else. Maybe it's a flag. I don't know. What is this thing? It doesn't necessarily look like a human, but maybe it is. Now, or this object, or this, what is this? Is this the front of something or the back of something? Or what's this animal and what are these things? And all of these symbols have to be interpreted into maybe a full object or a series of individual things. So looking at images like this and artwork that we see around communicate something and we're figuring out how to, how to solve that problem. Another example is graphic symbols, using a graphic to, to show the values of something changing. In this example, this is a very, very old image of planetary orbits made in the 10th century. This is depicting a planet and its movement over time. We have the value of time going across the bottom and then the different planets and their course through the galaxy uh, moving along. So using charts and using graphic symbols. Here's another example. Uh, this was done in around 1781 to 1870, or that was when this person uh, lived. And this is a, uh, uh, an example of Napoleon's uh, 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 campaign to Moscow. And so it has a series of information. It's got data on it. There's information on this page about temperature and the size of armies and location and direction. And all of this has to do with when and where they were at specific places in time. Now there were groups of people who were also study studying these things called the futurists. And these people were interested in trying to convey action and, and, and things in motion. And so here's an, an, uh, a painting by an uh, artist named uh, Bala. This is called Dog on a Leash, done in 1912. And what you can see is, hopefully, you'll see this sense of this uh, dog. You can see what kind of dog it is. It looks like a little dachshund. You can see his feet and his tail in motion. You can see the leash 
flipping back and forth. You can see the feet or the boots and the, and the, and the coat moving and also these lines. So we have these diagonal lines kind of going off to a, a common point, a vanishing point. We have all this action and we can see it in a single image. We get this somehow our mind makes us think that this thing is happening. They're walking right by us and it's just totally active. Now another way to depict motion uh, is to, to work and rely on design principles. If you're not familiar with your design principles, you definitely need to be studying those uh, and becoming, uh, becoming very familiar with how you use them. And an example of this, we have a lot of design principles happening. If you look at the different lines on the page, there's things occurring that make them different from one another and add energy and, and movement to the page. First of all, there's something called line weight, and that's the thickness of these lines. These are thicker and thinner in areas, so their line weight changes, which provides this wavy feel. The changing of tone from brighter to darker gives us a sense of form. It almost feels like it's coming out at you. It comes out at you and curves around and it gives a sense of form. And the fact that there are these vertical lines like this because of the way the line weight moves. So there's vertical lines. So we've got vertical lines and weight changes in the line weight and the sense of tonal changes. And all of those things make uh, this thing feel very, very active. Another image here is this sense of in, in nature. Another thing that's happening is this sense of motion in the same kind of idea and just the fact that these trees are unstable, they're moving and swaying, they're not, but they feel like they are due to the changes of um, vertical lines and the, the way the trunks move and also that sense of tone. We have depth as well. And there's just movement. It keeps your eye moving around. This grabs your attention. This over here grabs your attention. The objects in the front are very strong. They have very strong saturated values and the ones in the back are very desaturated and almost blend in with the background themselves. So uh, those things are being used to create this sense of movement. It almost feels like these trees are just uh, swaying even though we know they aren't, but it feels like it. Now another sense of, uh, does, another thing you can do is have an unstable figure. So you can have unstable figures in an image and get the sense that this, uh, uh, the figure, something's going to happen. You're going to anticipate this person falling down or jumping off something. You see these pictures where people are on the edge of a building or on the edge of something. You get the sense of, oh, you kind of get this tension. Uh, and that can create a great deal of anticipation to what might happen. You can imagine this guy is getting ready to slip or fall, or maybe he's getting about ready to be run over by a taxi cab or something. You've got this, this his tie is off, his arms are out, his, he's on his toes, so he's very unstable. Other examples of this are figures in this scene, they're working. You can tell, you get a sense of an active scene. You've got these vertical bars here that give a sense of stability. But then you've got characters that are bent over, things on their backs, they're reaching, their legs are, are wide stanced, and you can see that they're active. Here's another angle pointing down at something. And you get kind of a con contract or, or contrast uh, uh, from stable vertical lines to these uh, bent and, uh, people who are bent over and making angles. And so another example of this cha very chaotic scene is this uh, called the Rape of the Sabine Women uh, uh, and this provides a lot of angles. If you see there's a lot of uh, angles in one direction like this pole goes this way this sword goes this way, his body goes this way, but then we have all these arms reaching out this way to the opposite side, the opposite side, the flow of the fabric, the arms of the people. There's like a, a pull in one direction and a pull in the opposite direction. And then we have these nice towers and this nice building to create this sense of stability so we know what's stable and everything else is at angles and in chaos. And this whole scene feels very much like a place you wouldn't want to be. At least I wouldn't want to be there. It feels like a lot of problems. 
Another example is in design where you think, think of automobiles, where they are using the fact that you can shape a car or shape an object uh, in a way that gives it a more active or energetic type of feeling. A wider front end and a smaller back end, kind of that teardrop shape, which feels like it's moving forward. In animation, we do what's called a squash and stretch, so that the ball, when it moves, it actually becomes elongated and squashed and, and more like an oval versus a steady ball, like a, a bowling ball wouldn't wouldn't squash and stretch it'd be a sphere the whole time showing its hardness and it's and it's got weight but a ball that is active will stretch and it gives it more energy and it feels like it's flowing and moving and it has uh, it's like a comet you know streaking across the sky you really know where the beginning and the end is same way with a car design look at cars and look at uh, ergonom or not ergonomics, but aerodynamic and or not some ergonomic things as well. How you hold something can have a very elegant design to it, or, or sorry, how something's designed. And so having those kind of uh, shapes and proportions and form. Another thing that you can do to sim to give this sense of time passing or activity is have different images that suggest activities like for instance you can imagine uh, if you had to depict a, a day's worth of activity what you would do in the morning for instance we picked the grapes in the afternoon we washed the vases in the uh, you know some other time of day we picked more grapes or some other plant and then we did our studies and then we did our math and then we cleaned the carpets you know all of this can depict in one image a series of actions that take time or maybe these are this is what I did when I was a baby and this is what I did when I was young and you can you can get that sense of time passing and at the end of the page you're an adult or you finish the day or it's the end of a year and so having those kind of ideas really really work now to contrast this kind of feeling of activity you can also use things such as color things such as shape or isolation where we take something and we kind of set it off in a different group by itself or isolate it in different ways so in a scene like this we have lots of strong verticals vertical towers lots of strong shapes that are very kind of uh, balanced the same size the same uh, the same size the same shape maybe it's repeated this is the same this is the same this is the same but then punctuate it with a contrasting shape like a round light or a hole or you have bland colors like beiges and browns and then punctuate those with blues and reds and pinks and darker reds so different levels of saturation nothing super saturated obviously very muted in this particular case to stay with the the, the types and the, the types of the style of this image but you still can kind of pop around boom boom look here look here look there look there even though the image feels like nothing is happening the eye is still being drawn about by these different shapes different tones different colors different uh, contrasts or, or the way that you group something or isolate something together you have a group of people standing but then a strange object or a different contrasting object off to the side. Now as we move more into technology you can get a sense of things being moved by what's called motion blur where we see experiments with photography where you leave the shutter open a little bit longer than normal so it's, it's revealing more motion on that sense of, on that piece of film. So you get this blurring effect so you see that constantly. You also get a sense of uh, motion when you're looking at a series of images that are overlapping one another so a sequence of multiple poses this is one you see a lot and so you can see that this person is going through a series of particular poses when they're jumping so we've got this frame this frame this frame and you can see and almost imagine you can see the animation or it's not an, you can see the movement of this person in your mind uh, and it's very clear what they are doing and you can imagine the movement. Another example is comic speed lines where we have lines that show some kind of movement in a comic. So some kind of movement, some kind of, um, some kind of uh, indication, a mark of something that shows that something's 
shaking or moving or shivering or uh, something is falling. We see this kind of thing all the time in comics. Another area is graphic symbols. So giving a sense of movement to say show the current of the ocean or wind. Um, we see this all the time on television on signs and symbols um, where we, we need to look at, a, I look at the weather every day when I look at the, um, the, the website, there's maps that show how, the, how things are going to be moving in, the, 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 the way the, the storm is going to flow, those kind of things. And they're using symbols, arrows and lines and dotted lines and all this kind of stuff to show that things are in motion. Another example is when we drive. How do we know something's going to be coming or the road is going to change and it's going to occur? Uh, we see signs and we see graphic symbols like this all around us. Now today, what I, what today and from now on, I want you to be aware of these kinds of things. Wherever you go, you know, when you're walking down the hall on campus or at your home, look at packaging, look at, look at magazines and look at how they make things active. Look at car, uh, cars and design and see how they make something feel the way it feels. How, why does that car feel like a sports car versus a family sedan versus something else? You know, you, you, it's because of the way it's designed. Why, does, uh, why did they choose to put symbols on the, um, uh, the fire escape sign? You know, how to exit the building? What do they use? They show you are here and this is how you're supposed to get out. And so what I want you to do is look at everything. Look at movie posters, look at billboards, look at book illustrations, everything. And look for a sense of movement or motion. Um, and so even in like this book, if you can see the symbol here, this little, uh, oops, uh, how do I get to it? It's confusing. Uh, right there, under Autodesk, that A, it actually is active and it is it's got lines and it overlaps one another and it goes this way and up and down and you can kind of feel it and so you look on the Dell computer I have a Dell computer and the E is crooked and it kind of feels like it's active and maybe it's dropping or falling and you know it's just like you can just say why did the artist do that what was it so for example I was just out minding my own business now this movie's old now but it happened when it was in the theater but it comes to mind when I just started looking at things and so it was my bloody Valentine and at first I didn't really pay any attention to it but then I realized oh it's a sequence of stages just like I was talking about right here where the kid is jumping well they did the same thing to show this pickaxe coming at me of course it's going to be in 3d but you can see these things if you look at different types of packaging if you look at your mcdonald's happy meal or some sort of packaging bag you can see if you look at these fish in the background i put them at angles so they feel like they're looking at something or they're moving i mean i do that for a reason there's a rocket ship it's at an angle to feel like it's taking off and so all kinds of stuff happening uh, in and around you for a reason. And so you're going to look for examples. You need to find four, three or four examples in the real world, not Googling it. No Google images count. You have to capture it on your phone. You have to take a photograph of it or the, with your camera of it happening wherever you are, whether it's a car design, whether it's a billboard, whether it's a book or a magazine ad or something someone created. You know, look at things. Look at things all around you, a brochure of some sort. There's a graphic symbol, right? Wherever my finger is, there. And this person is running. Look at how they're running. Now, I didn't have this. This was just sitting there. I didn't even plan on it. Uh, but this and all of these little symbols, what do they mean? Even the shape of a tornado uh, is, is like a graphic symbol. The fact that this has a blurred background and the ambulance is coming, that, and these symbols here. So all over the place. And so what I want you to do is get out there and find it and become aware of it in everything you do and think about it and then use those ideas for your own work. All right, that's implied motion. Put it into use in everything you do. Well, not everything, but put it, make it a part of your common knowledge and understanding of design.